Breaking news right now at 425 here on 10 TV. We have been following this situation since 2 o'clock this morning. But look at some pictures from uh, our Skyview camera. And just look at that. You can see that fire just continues to burn. And you can just see like many explosions because of this train derailment situation. Again, happening in North Columbus. Well, quite a, uh, a fireworks show for folks around that area. If you're driving on 71 at any time this morning, you are definitely going to see it. Please be careful. It, it is going to be uh, almost unavoidable to take a look at this, you know, as you're driving along and rubberneck in this situation. Yeah. You can see it from 70 to the south, actual flames burning when you're all the way to the south on 70. This is Chopper 10's pictures right now. Uh, we're getting a real good look from right above this. As you can see, several cars on fire there. Mm -hmm. Train derailment at 2 o'clock this morning and uh, and the subsequent explosion. And now it's burning off. We're told some type of uh, of a gas is burning off right there. Some type of an alcohol is, it just has to burn out. Uh, Tino Ramos is set up and uh, ready to tell us what he's seeing right there. Tino, what can you tell us? Yeah, you know, a couple of uh, new information that we have here for you. We know that this train derailment, there were actually 98 cars that were on uh, that line there. They said that there are two uh, of the uh, hazardous chemicals that were a part of those trains. Now, what we're seeing right now, right behind me, this is fields right here. You can see police have blocked this off. But over my shoulder, and they're keeping us about a mile away here, you can see the smoke off the distance, and that's where we are seeing it from high above. You can see it's still burning here. What had broken loose was a... a alcohol based uh, car there and that's what you're burning at this point. Another thing they're concerned about too that has not been released is a chemical called styrene. They say that is hazardous as well, but they say there's no concern for contaminants at this point in the area here. They're just kind of letting it burn off here while they figure out how they're going to uh, immediately put this thing out. They are bringing foam trucks into the area hoping to do so. Now I do know and I just found out that they uh, are evacuating the area. About a hundred people have been evacuated from the area. They're, pe they're being taken rather to the road center on the uh, fairground at this point here. But I want to show you this video here too though. You're going to see this explosion here that occurred uh, just about two o'clock this morning. Yeah, that, that's it right there. Yeah, you can see the flames here just shooting off. Matter of fact, we're getting calls from all around 270. They can see it out in Reynoldsburg, Westerville. It just lit up the sky. I happened to be traveling on 315 at the time that this ex explosion occurred here. It just looked like daylight. That's how heavy of the flames that were coming out here. Now, at this point, uh, fire crews do have the thing surrounded. They uh, believe they're going to be able to contain it within that area. But, of course, they're concerned about any hazardous materials that might be in those other cars that did not seep out. Again, all hands on deck for police and firefighters on the scene, especially in the case of where they're trying to evacuate people out of that danger zone. They've got a one mile radius of evacuation. Shayla Reeves is on the ground as well, getting us some information about some of those evacuees and where they're heading as well. Shayla. Well, right now, Angela, I'm here with Marquita Kelso and also Roncoa Foster here. Both of them witnesses to this explosion this morning. First up, uh, Marquita, just describe for me what you hear this morning. What woke you up? The door, the knock at the door woke me up, the fire department told me I had to evacuate the, um, my house. And your home was actually just a couple of blocks away from this fire, from this explosion. Once you got out, can you describe what you saw when you look back? It's a big uh, blaze of fire right there and all this smoke. Sorry, I, mean, I just stayed back away from it. And actually, Roncoa, you lived only about seven or eight blocks away, further away than even Marquita, and you felt it, you heard it. Describe what you saw that light. Uh, it was like a big old white bright light, like the sun actually pointing at your window. And um, I heard it, but at first and felt it, but I didn't see the flame or nothing until like I turned around and looked back and I seen it out my kitchen window. And it was actually seven or eight blocks away from your home, just how intense and bright those flames actually were. They're still going for, from our location right now. We're at the intersection of East 11th Avenue and Essex. We've been on the phone this morning with uh, fire officials, and we're working to learn more information about uh, the staging area, what's going on this morning. What we can tell you so far, they are working to set something up at the fairgrounds uh, where the CODA buses will be headed sometime later this morning to take some of the elderly uh, folks that have been evacuated weren't able to get out on their own. And as we continue to learn new details about this evacuation process this morning, we'll bring you those details right here on 10 TV News and 10 TV.com. Reporting live here at the intersection of 11th and Essex, Shayla Reeves, 10 TV News. Our 10 TV teams have been working around the clock since this situation happened nonstop into the early morning hours. We are spread out all over to cover every angle of this breaking situation from the ground and also from the air. We begin our breaking team coverage right now from Chopper 10, Kareem.
Karina Nova is live with more on what she is seeing from the air right now, Karina. What's going on here? You could see those flames are still burning pretty high. It looks like they have died down, I'd say just a little bit since we've been here. We've been flying over this for almost two hours now. Now take a look, I'm gonna zoom out and show you a better look at what's going on here. You could see eight cars, eight train cars are involved in this. The, what you see that's burning right there, those are three tanks, it looks like. And take a look over here, it looks like those cars are uh, burning pretty good still. Uh, there are fires around this as well in the wooded area. If I zoom out, you'll be able to see that. There's uh, that fire and that smoke that's going into that wooded area right there along those tracks. Thanks for that update and those pictures. Here was the view from our Skyview camera overnight. This camera posted 1,100 feet up in the air, and that is what it saw, hundreds of feet of flames blowing out of the sky. And right now, we do want to get the very latest on what is happening on the ground with 10 TV's Tino Ramos. He is live at ground zero of this breaking situation. Tino? Yeah, you know, Karina talked about the Coda workers here that they weren't able to get back in here, but we also have right here, you can see these are all the Rumpke workers because this train derailment happened just right outside their facility. They're looking to re, uh, regroup and try to find another facility that they can work at at least before they can get in there. Behind me, take a look here. You can see Columbus police have blocked off fields. This is the southern portion right here, and it's just over my shoulder here where this fire is. Matter of fact, from Mass Cam, you can get a better view of exactly what's burning here as you see, view it from the ground here. Now, I want to show you the video here because this is what everybody's talking about. Take a look at this video, and this is where the explosion occurred here. Our cameras captured this thing. You could hear it for miles, and you could see it just light up the sky. It almost looked like daylight. That's how big of an explosion this was. Now, 98 cars were a part of this line here. Four or five of them tipped over. Inside that tanker was an alcohol based chemical, and that's what caused the pressure in that tanker. Once it was ruptured, the explosion occurred here. Now, crews are just trying to let this thing burn itself out. That's the best way to do it. They do have foam trucks on the scene here trying to, uh, as well, assist with this, but it's going to take a little while before they get this thing out. They do tell us no contamination issues based on the chemicals that are in there burning right now. There was one chemical called styrene that was a part of this line. Uh, Fortunately, they say that one was not ruptured, so they're not concerned about that one at this point. In the meantime, they're just trying to get everybody around this. You can see the police officer right here just trying to get Rumpke out, trying to get cars through this area. This has really become an inconvenience for everybody trying to get around this area, but it's likely they'll have to be a, uh, have to stay away from this area, I should say, probably throughout the entire day until they can get this thing out. We're going to keep you updated on the situation, of course, throughout the morning. In North Columbus, Tino Ramos, 10 TV News. Tino, thanks. And again, for people living within a one mile radius of this breaking situation of the train derailment, you are now being evacuated by rescue crews and police. That's the area where it's being evacuated and all of those evacuees being taken to the Ohio State Expo Center. That's at the fairgrounds a little bit north of where this train derailed. And exactly where Shayla Reeves continues our team coverage this morning from that area. Shayla, what's happening as the evacuees continue to arrive there today? Well, as the evacuees pull in, we've seen Red Cross here as well. Also, where they are headed is right there inside the road center here at the Ohio Expo Center. This uh, location here, we've seen buses pulling out throughout the morning. Some of the people that are coming here, they are people that live right there in that half mile radius of what we've been calling Ground Zero this morning. This is Nicholas Goodrich. He was literally just several yards away when this whole thing began. Nicholas, can you describe that screeching sound you mentioned? Yeah, it was like the guy, his brakes went out on the train, and it was just really, really, really loud. It was just a screeching real, like, skrrr, for a long time, and he's like smacked the back of another train. And you were outside with some of your friends. Can you describe what that impact sounded like, and what did you see immediately afterwards? It was, it was like a crash and a real loud explosion. You can feel the, the, the vibration from the explosion. And uh, just, just to be that close to something like that, how scared were you? It, it, listen, it was it was so hot, like the heat was just it was it was it was a, it was amazing. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. I'm glad that you are okay. You were not hurt. 
he is just one of about 100 people we've learned this morning that have had to get out of their homes this morning evacuated after this train derailment. They are headed right inside there, the road center. Coda buses will be pulling in again shortly to bring them here. It's a place they can stay until this situation is contained. We know there are a few people there between 4th and 6th streets who did choose to stay inside of their homes. They did get that knock on the door, we're told, but they did decide uh, they wanted to go ahead and stay. We're going to be here throughout the morning, and as we learn more, we'll bring you those details as we get them. There are some of the buses you're looking at right now. Reporting live at the Ohio Expo Center, Shayla Reeves, 10 TV News. Shayla, thanks for that update. As we go back to uh, our live pictures right now of Chopper 10, uh, Shayla's, interview, uh, Shayla's interview there uh, spoke about the, the train and how it was headed and how it was screeching mm -hmm. on the brakes. Uh, something we have learned just recently since it became light outside is that it was on a curve. That train right. was on a turn. It was a, a southbound train, but the tracks go straight in one part and then they turn in another part. And right there is where the turn happened. And that right there is where the train cars are scattered uh, after derailing overnight. Uh, pretty frightening inferno for everyone there. And right now that warning is extending from that one mile radius of that evacuation and now being issued to students who are living nearby on the Ohio State campus. Maureen Kosa continuing our team coverage on this with more on the emergency instructions being given out to students this morning. Maureen. Ohio State University did reach out to students early this morning just letting them know that a train derailment had happened. I told students uh, that there were some evacuations, advised everyone to do whatever the public safety officials told them to do. Right now, OSU says campus is open this morning and classes will continue as usual. Again, you are looking at uh, pictures from Chopper Town of this fire. Right now, firefighters are telling us that there is no imminent threat to nearby businesses or homes. Uh, they're letting this fire uh, basically burn itself out, keeping a tight perimeter, keeping a very close eye on what is happening on the ground. But we've been getting emails from viewers all over central Ohio reporting they've seen this fire from as far away as Pataskala, Delaware, Eastern Fairfield County on the Perry County line. But this is something uh, that was really interesting. We got an email from someone who lives in Grandview who says the force of the explosion actually blew the windows out of his home. So this was an intense explosion. In fact, a volunteer firefighter who was at I-71 in the Morse Road area when this happened says it literally looked, quote, like someone had dropped a bomb on Columbus. So this was an intense fire, got a lot of people out of bed this morning. We also have an update right now. If you work for Rumpke, if you're involved with that company, we just got off the phone with Rumpke. They tell us they safely evacuated everyone at two o'clock this morning. Now they thought they were going to be uh, able to start allowing some employees to return back to work. That has changed just a minute ago. Rumpke told us that right now no one is allowed back on site. Of course, this is a minute by minute uh, decisions that are happening out there uh, as this situation develops. So we're just going to keep getting the latest information for you that we can, and we'll keep passing it along to you, Jeff and Angela. Right now we have the opportunity. We've got Mike Pinnell, uh, the director of the Franklin County Emergency Management Agency and Homeland Security as well, on the phone with us at this time. Mike, tell us where you're located right now, and, and what's the biggest challenge you're facing? Well, we're in our emergency operations center off of uh, 270 and 161. Biggest challenge we have is two things. is making sure that our common operational picture, what they're seeing on the ground there, the incident commander, what he's seeing, we've got accurately displayed on our, our uh, screens here. And number two is making sure we're supporting the incident commander, the senior fire official in charge. Well, we are lucky to catch the mayor. He has a very busy morning here, but he did stop for a couple of moments here to give us an update. You've been able to speak with the American Red Cross, also evacuees. What are you hearing from those evacuees? Well, uh, gratefulness that the Division of Fire knocked on their doors to evacuate them, kept them safe. Mike Davis has a look at, uh, you know, which direction that is heading and some of the dangers with some of the wind issues, Mike. Yeah, it's interesting, Jeff. The smoke is actually moving to the south and southwest because the winds out of the north and northeast. But, you know, I, I hadn't thought of it earlier, but live Doppler 10 radar is actually sensitive enough to pick up the plume of smoke. Now, every time we get a live pass and here it comes right here, it kind of bobs back and forth a little bit, depending on which way it's looking. But I've uh, gone into the street level. There's I-71, the big one just on the right hand side of your screen. There.
there. East Hudson on the north end, 17th Avenue and 11th Avenue. So over by the fairgrounds off to the west, you can actually see uh, this shoe out there. But again, we're watching that plume of smoke. Mm -hmm. Well, now they have some actual crews that are right there. Hazmat and some fire crews on the ground are moving in on this. This has been a stay away at arm's length kind of deal for a number of hours. Well, now they feel that it's safe enough. They're moving in right now, approaching these cars, trying to see what the next step may be. See how much spillage there is around the area there. They must feel that it's getting close to burning off. They thought it could take up to six hours time, but pretty good job there as these guys can move a little bit closer here and try to remove some of these trains and start to get that area cleaned up there. We, of course, have crews all over this scene until those flames go out. Stay with us on the air and online at 10tv.com, and we'll be back very shortly.